Hello and welcome to another episode of Pacifist Percent, a show that seeks to emulate Rockstar's content by both being infrequently released and by having questionable quality. Oh shit, here we go again. You picked the wrong house, homeboy, yo! Lamar tells Franklin of the big deal he has going down at Grove Street, but Franklin wants to bitch out on his homie. The unexpected arrival of Trevor and his insistence that they all be friends spurs the unlikely group into motion. I'm fucking new in town, I'm making friends, alright? Now let's party. Lamar, what's happening? What you and Stress set up? We buying weight, homie. Something that'll move us up the food chain, nigga, for real. I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap. You got the grip? Present and accounted for. Uh, Unfortunately, given the state of Rockstar's game economy, the group finds out that their bag of money is insufficient to purchase the goods. Guess they should have gotten some more shark cards. The seller, of course, is greatly annoyed, so he calls upon his friends to take care of the trio. We gotta get back to the hood, man. It's expensive around here. Being denied a good meal apparently brings out the best in Trevor and Lamar, as they are very competent throughout this entire mission. I had little else to do but wait around and slowly progress forward as they moved up taking out the enemies. Oh, 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 that's my cover. Ah. Trevor's dying. Oh. It's not my fault. Really should have thought that through. Normally around this time in a mission, some sort of complication is meant to arise for this series, as if Rockstar devs occasionally just snorted some coke and fucked with the code randomly. But this time at least, no, it was just more waiting. The world of GTA 5 is one where two crimes in succession would normally cause the police to jump all over you, as if they're EA and you've just found a new way to exploit consumers. In this instance, however, it takes the cops quite a long time to care enough to put a stop to the rising body count. Once they do arrive, however, we simply avoid them using the genius strategy of moving slightly to the left. They didn't stand a chance. Let's go, man. Avoiding the next set of cops that shows up is quite easy. The game is programmed to expect you to go straight, so if you turn around, there are effectively no cops and it's smooth sailing. You chubby motherfucker! Next time you better start blast or I'ma blast you myself! We now move on to the mission Scouting the Port, which is considered by many to be the greatest mission in GTA 5, potentially the greatest in GTA history due to its innovative and enjoyable game design. Trevor is a, the Trevor, Trevor is a... Trevor is a what? Trevor is a... Fruitcake. He's got family, I got kid, ain't he Floyd? That, 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 that's it, right, yes, Trevor. But, but the thing is, um, I ain't got a very big penis. Some girls laugh when they... When to look at it. Oh, show me. <laughs> what in the name of all things holy? Oh, that's beautiful. To put these on. What kind of person are you? Oh, I'm that kind of person, Floyd. I am that kind of person. Now. Oh, and I hate myself. Sometime later, Trevor, Wade, and Floyd head off to the docks to investigate if there's something to steal. Now, this mission employs state-of-the-art stealth mechanics, where we are required to walk very slowly in order to blend in. Furthermore, we are finally given what the player base has always requested, a simulation of being a dock worker, where we get to slowly move many different shipping containers. 
Pushing the boundaries of what is possible in gaming, Rockstar chose to make these containers not one but two different colours, what many considered impossible prior to this point. If that wasn't enough, we get to roleplay as a father taking pictures of a boat for his son. I think the fastest way down from the crane encapsulates my feelings about this mission, as clearly this is the height of my life and it's all downhill from here. So we move over to the Meriwether docks where Trevor abandons Floyd while stealing a shipping manifest that shows that Meriwether are holding and testing something for the governments. As I was leaving I attempted to take a better look at Floyd. This turned out not to be a good move. Oh. Oh. I did not know that happened. Making my way back and keeping a safe distance this time, I learned that these Meriwether guys are really committed to kicking the shit out of Floyd. No breaks, no rest, just the continued insistence that Floyd get a job. Get a job! Get a job! Get a job! Rockstar Games providing practical solutions to unemployment. You fucking pussy! As fun as that was, I decided to head back to finish the mission. Having now abandoned everyone, we head back to Floyd's house. So picture this, it was a Thursday afternoon, we just polished off the daily allowance of cocaine when suddenly it hit me. What is funnier than a person covered in shit? The answer of course is nothing, truly the comedic peak of the human race. Coming, <coughs> coming. Oh, it's, they're there, wait. Look, 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 it's, uh, Betty, you're just not cut out for honest work, all right? <laughs> There is literally a shit handprint on his shirt that is comedic genius. The writing in this scene truly shows that the 250 mil they spent making this game was well worth it. Frankly, I'm surprised how good it was considering how much we spent on cocaine. It was bold in terms of jerking people around, but I may have gone too far in a few places. This mission's bad. So now we're going to steal an unidentified weapon from Mayweather while they're testing it in the ocean. Honestly, it feels like there could be an easier way to make money for a guy who's immune to bullets, but what the hell do I know? So I need to get myself a mini sub and a cargo bob. You can park it there. You're sure it'll be okay there? Um, sure. All right. It has a little something for everyone without sacrificing anything containing content for both casual players and veteran gamers. This mission's bad. Using the cover of Broad Daylight, I use my stealth blimp to sneak into the heavily guarded military base. I plan to trade my blimp and two Charizard trading cards for their cargo bob. I assume they've accepted my deal because they've now lost all interest in me and this will never be mentioned again. Honestly, I think it may have been more difficult to kill people than not kill people for most of those missions, but thanks for watching anyway. The next couple of missions should be good, I will hop into making the next episode as soon as possible. By the way, I suspect this episode will not make me revenue because of the music during the Big Smoke order, so if you want to help me out through any other means, I'd appreciate it. I hope you're all doing well.